Welcome back. Let's look at the example for the bounded uh, variable simplex method. Again, we still maintain our uh, consistency as a maximization problem with the 2x uh, maximizing 2x1 uh, plus 3x2, and x1 plus 2x2 plus x3, which is a slack variable, equals 22, x1 minus x2 plus x4, which is another slack variable, equals to 1. And the thing is, x1 is between negative 1 to 6, x2 is between 2 to 10, x3 and x4 currently are no bound, with uh, only thing is non-negative. Okay, if we set all, uh, <coughs> initially, these two, uh, x1 and x2, in their lower bound, for example, as a starting, so x1 equals to negative 1, x2 equals to x negative, uh, positive 2, so I'm going to have a beta bar, which is a current basic solution equals to beta 1, beta 2, equals to uh, actually the x3 and x4, equals to 22 minus negative 1 minus 2 times x2, equal to 19. All right? And also for x4, equals to 1 minus negative 1 plus 2 equals to 4. So they are currently greater than or equal to 0. x3, x4 has lower bound 0. So it is a feasible solution to begin with. Now, objective function value, we can calculate, <coughs> actually, 2 times uh, negative 1, which is x1, 3 times x2, which is 2, equals to 4. That's my initial tableau to begin with. Let's take a look at this in initial tableau. <coughs> we'll put it in. All right, so x1 and x2 right now on the lower bound, right here. So since both of them has a negative zj minus cj, so both of them are candidate to come in, but we only choose the mac, uh, maximal one, so the negative maximal one, okay? So this is x2 is choosing two as an incoming variable, okay? Then we're going to determine what is the maxima uh, movement x2 can in turn. So x2 equals to L2, which is currently 2, plus delta 2 equals to 2 plus delta 2. And we're computing sigma 1, sigma 2, and u2 minus L2. Okay, sigma 1 is, actually we only have one with a positive, one with a negative. Okay, so that's easy. All right. And this is equal to 19 half. This is equal to infinity. So really, this one is no portion. And the L, uh, <coughs> u2 minus L2 equals to 10, actually, is the upper bound minus lower bound equals to 8. So the minimum of these three, actually, 19 half, infinity, and 8 is 8. That means this particular variable, x2, is going to maintain non-basic, but moving from his lower, current lower bound into the upper bound. So currently lower bound, moving to the upper bound. Let's look at the... So delta 2 equals to u2 minus l2 is a. Therefore, x2 goes from his lower bound to his upper bound, but maintain non-basic. We're going to update the right-hand side. Okay, and update their uh, objective, uh, object, the objective function value. Objective function value of the update is actually equals to negative 3 times the 8. A, a is a delta k equals to 28. <coughs> okay, and the beta can be changed, okay, from 19 and 4 minus y2 times delta 2 equals to 3 and 12. So that's my new tableau down here, new tableau down here. <coughs> Again, we can, could see in this case, x2 is in the upper bound, but have a negative zj minus cj, so it's not going to come in uh, entering. But x1 could be a candidate. x1 currently is non-basic variable at the lower bound, but with a negative zj minus cj. 
So x1 could be entering the basis. Okay. However, we're going to also do the minimum ratio test. We figured out x3 is the one actually leaving the base. Okay. Since we have two positive column, okay, two positive column. Now, uh, two positive uh, y, k version. Let's take a look. Next slide. So I'm going to choose x1 entering since uh, zj minus uh, z1 minus c1 is less than or equal to zero, uh, less than zero, and x1 currently in lower bound. So x1 equals to l1, which is negative one plus a delta k one. Calculate delta 1 is minimum between these delta 1, delta 2, and U, U1 minus L1. Actually, this portion, since we have a two positive elements in that column, Y, K in that column, and then we're going to choose the minima between these two is equal to 3. So the min delta 1, the maxima it can go is 3 based on delta 1. So this part C is going to determine, okay, since delta 1 is based on uh, uh, delta 1 right here, equal to 3, so x3 is going to be leaving. So x3 will be reaching his lower bound, which is a 0, and x1 I'm going to enter. x1 currently at the negative 1 plus 3 is going to be become positive 2, which is the right-hand side, beta 1. The objective function value is going to move from the current 20A minus Z1 minus C1 times delta 1 equals to 20A minus negative 2 times 3 equals to positive 34, which increase my objective function value. And beta 2 is going to be update, which is x4, basically, of the currently value of 12, minus y11 times delta 1 is 12 minus 1 times 3 equals 9. And that's the new value of x4. So, <clears throat> so we'll perform an update based on y11. And let's go into the next tableau. Tab table 3 actually shows x1 and x4 right now are the basic variable x1 and x4, and x2 and x3 are <coughs> non-basic variable. X1, x2 are currently at the upper bound, x3 currently at the lower bound. x2 currently at the upper bound with the positive zj minus cj value, so it's a candidate to uh, entering the basis, which is the only one in this case. So, <coughs> x2 entering the basis since uh, z2 minus c2 is positive, and x2 currently is an upper bound. So we're going to go to step 3 again. Calculate x2 equals to the current upper bound minus the delta k, which is 10 minus delta 2. Okay. So we're going to figure out what is the delta 2 is. And to determine what is the... Uh, Pos maximum possible value for delta 2, we'll calculate delta 1 first. Since this column will have one positive, one negative. So delta 1 and delta 2 both have value. Delta 1 is equals to 2, delta 3 equals to 3, and u2 minus uh, l2 is 8. So among 2, 3, and a, the minimum is 2. And that means one of the basic variables is going to reach its upper bound, which is uh, x1 is going to go out again. All right. So x2 entering, x1 uh, leaving. So next, we're going to, since delta 2 is based on delta 1, so x1 reaches upper bound and x2 entering the row 1. X2 is moving from 10 uh, uh, minus delta 2, delta 2 equals to 8. Okay, also, 
My objective function is going to move from 34 to 36. Beta 2, again, is the x4 will be moving from 9 all the way to 3 in that case. And that's the next pivot table we have. And this table 4 showed me x1 is currently in the upper bound. x1 is currently at the upper bound with a negative zj minus cj. x3 is in the lower bound with a positive zj minus c, c, uh, positive zj minus c, c, uh, c, c3. So therefore, the current tableau is the optimal tableau. Okay, and this is the uh, <coughs> optimal solution of z star equals to 36, x1 equal to 6, non-basic at the upper bound, x2 equals to a is the best basic, x3 equals to <coughs> uh, x3 equals to 0 is non-basic at the lower bound, x4 equal to 3 is basic uh, variable. All right. This is also conclude this uh, lecture. Uh, we'll have another uh, section talking about how to finding a, an initial basic feasible solution. Uh, we're going to using a separate uh, lecture video to explain that.